this is the part that most people get really flipped around with uh, with the EVPN. I'm, I'm listening diligently so I don't get all flipped around. Go ahead, lay it on me. Yeah. So the next one, the next one we're going to get into is called an IP verf, or also known as a layer three VNI. And um, so generally what's going to happen, when you ever do eVPN, the best practice, you don't have to do this, but you have to do this. <laughs> it's not a requirement, but, but do it. Is So all of these routes, all these type 2 routes, and then there's five other types, and actually now there's like 12 other types, all these routes have to go somewhere, um, and we don't want them in the, in the default VRF. Just, it'll just make it a lot easier if they're in a different VRF. So we always create a eVPN specific VRF. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a VRF called Kirk. It could be red, it could be VRF red. This is gonna be my tenant. Even if I just have one tenant, e even if I'm not doing anything multi-tenant or anything like that, I'm gonna have one tenant and that's gonna be Kirk. And that's gonna be instantiated as a VRF called Kirk. Call it Picard, you know, whatever your favorite captain is. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Yours is Kirk. Fair I like enough. It. That, that, actually, it's not Kirk. It's uh, but you know, Kirk is one that everyone's familiar with. Um, so um, it's just a name. Um, so we're going to throw all these routes into Kirk. So these these VRFs are not going to be your standard VRFs, but they're going to be installed underneath of this VRF. So, for example, when I create an interface, I'm going to put it in uh, VRF Kirk. So when I create a default gateway, that's going to be in VRF Kirk. And if I want to look at my type two routes, I'm going to do show IP route VRF Kirk. So all these all the routing information. Uh, all the rib information is going to be in VRF Kirk rather than the default VRF. You're leaving the default VRF for other things. It kind of reminds the me underlay. of layer, layer, okay. uh, layer 2 design with VLAN 1. You just you really don't use VLAN 1 for anything. You're not supposed yeah. to do that because reasons. Yeah, this feels yeah. like the same sort of a, a concept. We're going to create a VRF, uh, Kirk in this case, and everything's going to live mm -hmm. under there. That leaves the default VRF off to the side for, in this case, the underlay. Okay. Yeah. Yep, so that's going to be, uh, yeah, we're just going to have the underlay in the default VRF, and that's, and that's fine. And then um, all of our eVPN stuff, we're going to put it into at least one um, IP VRF, one router VRF, switch VRF, whatever you want to call it. We're going to put at least one. We can start making multiple ones. We can have Kirk, Picard, Janeway, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, depending on how I want to separate my traffic, and maybe I've got some uh, compliance issues, I need to separate traffic. Um, you could separate them out that way. Uh, but we're just going to put, a, right now we're just going to put everything under Kirk. So these Mac VRFs, these discrete forwarding spaces, are going to be underneath uh, the VRF Kirk. And these IP VRFs are going to be under there uh, as well. Now, the Mac VRFs, we create usually one Mac VRF. So one layer to VNI, so one VXLAN segment per VLAN locally. So it's going to be one VLAN, one Mac verf per VLAN. So one one of these, these, yep. One of these for every one of these these VLANs. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, one to one. For the IP verf, we're only going to do one per. VRF, per, per router VRF, one per Kirk, one per Picard, one for whatever. Because what this, this IP VRF does is that, so I'm going to use different colors here. So yellow is going to be my IP, it's going to be my Mac VRF, or my layer 2 VNI. And I'm going to use segment 10,001. Now these um, VRFs, these Mac, VR, Mac VRFs, are going to be stretched across multiple leaves. 
and whatever VLAN they're assigned to locally doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But um, in here are going to be type 2 routes of MAC addresses. Those are our MACs with our uh, route targets that uh, identify, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got the mappings on each one so that we know where which VLAN they're supposed to end up with, and so on. Yeah, OK? Right, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a unique route target to each of these, so that when we when I announce when I create a route, I'm gonna throw that route target on it. It's gonna go into whatever, whatever you know BGP way that we get the route to the other leaves, and that other leaf is gonna take that route target, map it, uh, look it up in its its configuration, see okay, we're gonna go to this uh, layer two VNI. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to route between one segment to another segment, I need a, this is a, a type of um, routing, like traditional routing. You're saying mm -hmm. only I've got an eVPN fabric in my way, and this helps me get through the fabric. Right. So this is going to be my IP verf. Okay. Yeah. But to get this is still different than the Kirk VRF. The router VRF or the switch VRF. This is the one hierarchically underneath the that Kirk VRF, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have its own VNI as well. So here we got so the IP the layer three VNI is ten thousand. Um, the layer two VNIs are ten thousand one and ten thousand two. Because we're not mapping, we don't have to map to a VLAN one to one. We've just got some layer three. Uh, routing that we're doing here from one place to another, they can all live in the same uh, VNI effectively. Well, um, for this to for this to work with physical switches, um, every VNI needs to be mapped locally on a switch to a VLAN, and even the yep. IP verf needs to have a VLAN okay. associated to it. Um, the weird part is they don't need to be consistent VLANs. So, I, you know, uh, MAC verf 10,001 could be VLAN 101 on leaf one. It could be VLAN 10 on leaf two. Locally we significant. Do that. They don't we don't really need to interconnect yeah. at layer two. So, yeah, okay. Right. But by can, just to keep yourself from going completely crazy, uh, we treat them like they're globally significant. Yes, got it. Um, um, so, f you know, don't worry about that for now. What we do need to know is that our VNIs, our VXLAN segment IDs, VN, VXLAN network identifiers, they need to be globally significant across our network, across our fabric. So we've got one for layer, we've got two different layer two VNIs, and I, now I want to route between them. Um, we're going to be, what I'm showing you is something called symmetric IRB. If you do asymmetric IRB, you don't need that IP verf I wanted to show you, but almost everyone does symmetric IRB. Symmetric IRB is, is uh, the symmetric part is that we have Every leaf in our topology must have this IP verf. It, so that it's symmetric across all our devices. Let me back up a second here. Are we having to do okay. this because we lit up the EV, EVPN address family within multi protocol BGP? And so all of a sudden we're kind of obligated to be shoving everything in and out of a VTAP? Uh, or I guess another way to put the question, Tony. Why can't I just do native routing here? Why do I have to go through all these gymnastics to pull it off at this point? Well, um, we you know we're we're stretching layer two. That's why we have to do all these gymnastics. Is is the layer two part? So the layer two VNI part. That for if sure. If we want to yeah. do V motion, yeah. If we want to do V motion across multiple leaves that are connected via layer three boundaries, we have to do this. It, we, that's why we have to do all this gymnastics. And I'm with you on that part. It's the it's this. Maybe I'm not understanding what the layer three VNI is is achieving for us. Where it comes into play. This is the routing part of integrated routing and bridging. Mm. So you don't have to do it, but um, it's really nice that we can have not only eVPN e uh, handling our layer two stretching, but I've got one layer two network that needs to communicate with another two network. What does that mean? We got a route. Well, we're including that in with this as well. We're just throwing it in there so we don't have to have a separate router routing layer. So we'll but you could do it through traditional routing, but it's way easier this way. Okay. That, that, uh, yeah. I've got the eVPN fabric, and we're just going to keep everything consistent here. It just so happens instead of moving uh, layer two frames, we're moving layer three, but we've got a paradigm we've established here. So we're going to stick with uh, what we've got. 
And uh, if we didn't do that, we would be adding a different routing system to the mix that would be existing kind of outside of EVPN and adding, <laughs> I don't know, I was going to say adding complexity. I'm not sure if I think this is more or less complex, but, uh, but, but I trust me, it would be way more, yeah, it would be way more complex yeah. to do uh, not integrated routing bridging because the integrated routing part is super easy. Um, and it's easy, it's kind of the easier part to understand. So if I want to be able to have host one to communicate with host two, I need to go through my default gateway, which is going to be locally. It's going to be an SVI. Uh, so VLAN 101. And this will be the SVI for VLAN 102. And this is going to be any cache, so it's going to be across all of our leaves. So the same IP address. So this, the, so the anycast address here will be 10.1.1.1. The anycast address here will be 10.1.2.1. And these are going to act as my default gateways. So my layer 2 segment now has an SVI locally. Mm -hmm. So my host we use green for hosts. 10, 1, 1, 11. When it wants to send a packet to outside of its subnet, outside of its subnet mass, it's got to go to its default gateway. So it sends it up into the SVI. Now, uh, because we don't have the information to get to there through the layer 2 VNI. The, the MACVRF just has MAC addresses. We need an IP address, so we need to go to a routing process. So that is going to go up into our layer 3 VNI. Mm -hmm. And our layer 3 VNI is going to have host routes. And it's going to have a route that looks like this. 10, 1, 2, 50, slash 32, because we're talking host routes, is going to be on VTEP 3, and um, which you know, whatever IP addresses, it could actually be multiple IP addresses if it's uh, actually no, it won't be multiple IP addresses typically. So it'll be like you know three dot three dot three dot three. So that's our host reachability. So if I want to get host one wants to connect, um, send a packet to host two on a different subnet. I'm not routing through the fabric via a bunch of hops anymore. I know where my IP endpoints right. live within this fabric. So I need mm -hmm. a method that I can get most efficiently from one part of the fabric to the other, no matter what the IP address is. So I now I can do that lookup in the layer three VNI and know exactly where I've got to drop that packet, as opposed to a routing protocol that goes hop by hop by hop by hop. Uh, you are potentially much more efficient here. You're going to take that layer three. What does it do? Does it take is it still doing a VXLAN encapsulates a layer two frames? Was it still a layer two frame yep. basically? But okay, mm -hmm. and it's going to hand it off, strip that off, and deposit it at the feet of whichever switch has got 10.1.2.50 living on it. He'll do some kind of a local th uh, lookup in his layer three VNI and then pop it into the correct VLAN and send it on its way. Exactly. It just clicked. I think I got it now. Okay. Dude, I was not getting it before. I'm glad we went through this. <laughs> now I feel dense, but I'm getting it now. <laughs> no, it's 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 really weird. And it, it like, you know, having learned it, now it's like it's obvious now. But I, but I, I remember how weird this was and, and how hard it was to wrap my mind around it. And especially I wasn't super strong at routing either when I started out on this um, because I've been in the data center for the past 10 years and it's not been a lot of routing. Mm. Okay, so um, we got our SVI. So this is going to be locally VLAN 101. In fact, most of how I've learned BGP has been through mm. this. It's almost like cheating when you route like this. 
you get to skip a bunch of steps yeah. that uh, if you were going oh, the yeah. traditional way, you'd have to you'd have to go through. This is very interesting. Yeah, so this VLAN and this VLAN are tied to two different uh, MAC verfs. So this will be 10,001, this will be 10,002. So that'll be that. And then um, every leaf, it, not every leaf has to have the layer two VNIs. In fact, a lot of cases, uh, every leaf won't have every v layer two VNI, but every leaf must have the layer three VNI. Because mm -hmm. what will happen is the packet comes up, um, it knows it's not, the, it's not the local subnet, so it goes to the default gateway, it goes to the SVI, which is any CAS across, same IP address across all leafs. It goes up into, does a look up in the layer three VNI, sees that it's got a, it, we have a hit. 1011250, 1, we find it on um, VTEP3, which is going to go through its, uh, let's do a different color here for, this is the VTEP, 1111, 1, 1, 1. this is 3333. 3, 3, 3. It's going to generate a packet that source 1111, 1, 1, 1, destination 3333. 3, 3, 3, 3. It's going to get to the local leaf. Yep. Um, it's also going to look at it in its, uh, it, it's going to send it to the VLAN segment. Um, as a, a router normally would, and then that's going to get the packet to the local host. It's going to do a lookup, all right, where do I find the MAC address of 10.1.2.50, which would be like .02, and we just do a local uh, .02 lookup, and that's on Ethernet 1, and that'll get the packet down there. How did it know to drop it into VLAN 102 directly? Where did that lookup happen when it arrived? Um, in the, in the tunnel configuration, we have the VNI mapped to the local VLAN. So when the packet comes in with the destination VNI of 10,002, it knows to send it to VLAN 102. Okay. Okay, 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 yeah. So the route, so that's the data plane. So, the data, so we have two different ways to get the correct packet to the correct place. In the data plane, it's route targets. Tells us where to put that routing entry into either the layer two VNI or the layer three VNI. We'll talk about how we get to the layer three VNI in a second. From a con from a data plane perspective, the packet knows where to go based on the VNI, because every switch has a VNI to VLAN mapping. So when it gets a packet, it decapsulates it, looks at the destination VXLAN segment, and then drops it into that local VLAN that it's going to. Right. Be for. Okay. Yep. Okay, so um, the layer three VNI is going to have, it's going to be, a, the layer three VNI forwarding table space is going to be identical to all devices. It should have the same information. So another route is going to be in there 10, 1, 1, 11, slash 32 is on VTEP1. Now, leaf three and leaf one can communicate, can make sure that packets get to the right place because they all both have routes to get host one and host two. Uh, we can get them to each other. It's a bit of a Rube Goldberg machine, isn't it? Yep. There's a lot of a lot of spinning plates. Uh, I think that's how you how you referred to it earlier.